All right, so let's talk a little bit about the difference between a normal switch and a three-way switch. So on the normal switch on the left, you've got two different terminals in addition to the ground. And on a three-way switch, you've got three different terminals and they're different colors. So let's look at the wiring for a normal switch. Basically what you do is you install the hot wire or the black wire on a normal switch and you install that to both terminals. And basically when you flip the switch, it's gonna interrupt the circuit to turn the light fixture or fixtures on and off. On a three-way switch, you've got the hot wire coming into the black terminal, typically, and then you've got two brass terminals that are used for the traveler wires. Now, the traveler wires is what lets the three-way switches work independently to be able to control the lights and make sure they turn on and off. The traveler wires are very important here, and we'll talk a little bit more in detail about what those are in a second. The other thing I wanna talk about is the difference between line versus load. And we talk a lot about this when it comes to GFCI receptacles, um, but it also applies to light switches and especially three-way light switches as well. So basically the line is when you have power coming in. So whenever you have power coming into something, that's the line. And so in this example here, it's basically just, you know, power is coming directly from the breaker panel into the first switch. And then the load is what is being powered, right? So in this example here, the second light switch has the light bulb or the light fixture coming off of the second switch. So this is line versus load. And it's really easy to keep these two straight if you think about it this way. Line uh, has the word in in it. So you've got power coming in is line. And then load has the letter O in it. So load stands for out. So this is a really easy way to kind of help you remember which is line and which is load. Now let's talk about the travelers. So travelers are gonna go between the two brass terminals on both light switches. And again, this is what kind of controls uh, the circuit within each of these switches to turn the light fixtures on and off. You have a red wire and a black wire typically that will go between the two switches. Now, sometimes this is a little bit different. Sometimes you don't have a red wire and a black wire. Sometimes you have a red wire and you have a white neutral wire with black tape on it to indicate that it's also used for power. We'll talk a little bit more about what this is used for here in a second when it comes to the more advanced diagrams, but I wanna make sure you are aware that these are the two different types of wiring that you'll see when it comes to the travelers. The other thing I wanna point out here is we've got the red wire connected to the left terminal screw on the switch on the left, and we have the red wire connected to the left terminal screw on the switch on the right, and then we have the same thing for the traveler wire on the black. We've got the same terminals being used for both. Now, this isn't absolutely necessary to get this right. This will still work in a three-way switch installation, but it is best practice to try and match these up. And one of the reasons you wanna match these up whenever possible is sometimes you'll have a four-way switch, which would be you know three different switches controlling the light fixture. If you get these confused or if you get these to where they're not on the same terminals, that will mess up a four-way switch installation. But on a three-way switch installation, you can actually switch up the terminals and it'll be just fine. But ideally you wanna make sure you're matching the terminals that you're using from one switch to the other to keep everything straight. So to continue our example here, we've got the travelers connected to the switches as well as the power. So you can see how all this comes together. This is the flow of electricity between both of these switches. With that, let's add on the neutrals. So we've got the neutral wires here, and basically these are just spliced in each of these boxes to be able to pass the neutral on to the light fixture itself. And then last but not least, we're gonna add the grounding wires into this. So you can see here the ground wire coming from the electrical panel. It's pigtailed in each of the boxes to be able to have that continuous ground all the way up to the light fixture, as well as being able to ground each of the light switches. Also keep in mind that the wiring between the switches is going to be that 14.3 and the wiring coming from the electrical panel into the first switch box is gonna be that 14.2 wire, the standard wire, and then also off the last switch into the light fixture itself is gonna be 14.2. So the only case that we use 14.3 is gonna be in between the light switches itself. Now to make this really clear, I've isolated each of the boxes so you can see what the connections are in each one of these boxes. As you can see, in addition to the light switches that are being wired up, you've got the different splices as well. The other thing to keep in mind is on the light fixture itself is if the light fixture is wired into a metal box, you wanna make sure to connect the ground to the box itself. But for this illustration, we're just showing the wires coming into that last box. Now let's take a look at another example where instead of the power going through both switches and then to the lights, the lights are actually wired to be in between the switches. So this is another common setup that you might see in your house. And this one's a little bit trickier too because we're actually gonna change up the wires that we're using on the three-way switches. I've kind of broken this down with some conduit so you can see where the different wiring is to make it a little bit clearer. You can see here we've got a couple different sections where there's 14 two 
wire, and then you've got one section at the bottom that's using 14.3 that's, again, going between the switches. So first of all, let's talk about line versus load again. So we've got the line coming in from the electrical panel, and it's going all the way over to that last switch, and it's connected to the black terminal. Then on the second switch, the one that's actually got the lights wired to it, we've got the uh, black terminal connected and going up to the light fixtures as well. So there's our line versus load situation in this diagram. So here's a traveler situation. We're using a red wire in addition to a white wire marked with black tape. And the reason we're doing that is because we've got the black wire that's actually being used to carry the power all the way over to that last switch. And then the neutral is actually only used to go up to the lights itself. So the neutral doesn't follow this whole path. And since we have to make this complete circuit, we need to use all the wiring that's available in the 14.3. So this is what it looks like with the travelers and the power. So this is everything you need to complete that circuit. And now you can see the neutral added in. So again, the neutral spliced in, it's not going to that second switch. All it's doing is going all the way up to the light fixtures themselves. And then last but not least, we're adding the ground in so you can see how everything is put together. Now to make this really clear, again, I've got this broken down by each of the different boxes. So first we've got the different connections going to the switch in addition to a splice for the ground wire that's going off into four different wires. We've got the splice for the hot wire, and then we've got the splice for the neutral in that first box on the left. And then the box on the right, all we are doing there is completing the circuit into that second light switch. And then if you go all the way to the top, we've got the first light fixture, or it could be the only light fixture, but in this example, we're using two. So we've got the first light fixture and we've got all three wires. We've got the hot, we've got the neutral, and we've got a ground going into that box. And all three of those wires is going to go over into the electrical box for the secondary light fixture or third or fourth, or depending on how many light fixtures you have on that circuit. Now, sometimes you'll run into a situation where the power is not coming into a light switch at all. It's actually coming into the light fixtures first. So let's take a look at this scenario here because again, it's a little bit more complicated than the last two that we took a look at, but it's still pretty easy to understand once we break it all down. First, let's take a look at our line and our load again. So in this case, we've got the line coming from the electrical panel and it's being spliced in in the first box and we're actually changing it from the black wire into a white wire marked with black electrical tape. That white wire marked with black electrical tape is gonna come all the way down to that first electrical switch and get connected to the black screw, uh, also called the common terminal on the switch. And then from there, we've got the load, which is really connected to that black terminal or the common screw on the right switch. And then it's spliced in the box where the first switch is, and then it goes all the way back to the light fixture. So this is a little bit more complicated than the other two. And you can see why we covered the first two diagrams before jumping into this one. It's really the same thing, but the biggest confusing point that people get mixed up on is the fact that we're switching the wire from a black wire into a white wire marked with black tape. So in this case, again, we've got the travelers, we've got the red wire, and we're also using a white wire marked with black tape on this situation as well, because again, we need to be able to use all the wires on that 14.3 to get to that last switch. So this is what it looks like when you have all the power wires running through in addition to the travelers. You can see here again, kind of the confusing part of this is you've got the power coming into that first light switch with that white wire marked with black electrical tape. And then off of one of the travelers, you also have a white wire marked with black electrical tape going through to complete the circuit on that last switch in the circuit. Now that we're showing all the hot wires and the travelers, let's add in the neutral. And you can see here in this situation, the neutral only has to travel a short distance to the light fixture itself in order to complete the circuit. Let's add the ground in now. You can also see on the switch on the left, we've got two splices as well, one for the power and one for the ground. All right, and then just to make everything crystal clear here, here again is our example of what this would look like in each of the different boxes. Thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to this channel, and I will catch you in the next one.